Right, in last video, what we discussed, we, were, we discussed about the action potential. And we said that action potential is basically depolarization followed by wave of repolarization, right? And we discussed about that action potential is a way to transmit information from one point to another point within the nervous system and muscular system, right? Now, to, now right now, we'll talk about what are the factors which determine the velocity of action potential, right? Let's talk about it. The, what are the factors which determine the velocity of action potential? Let's suppose we make a section of spinal cord here. This is sent part of the central nervous system. And let's suppose that here is a sensory neuron. This is a sensory neuron which has central extension and it has peripheral extension. Last time we were talking about that this is a cell body of a sensory neuron. This is its central process and this is its peripheral process. Let's suppose from the spinal cord in this area, this peripheral process is coming to my skin. And the purpose of this point is to take the information from here. When luckily if someone touches here and make right, then this information of touch should be eventually transferred to the central nervous system. And you know that when stimulus is given and if there's appropriate stimulus, it should stimulate the nerve neuron, it should stimulate the neuron and electrochemical changes should be produced in neuron and those electrochemical changes should sweep over the surface and these electrochemical changes are called, yes please, action potential. We have discussed into detail how when someone touches here in the last video, when someone touches here, how the local potential are produced and then eventually how depolarization and repolarization is produced and how it moves, right? First of all, we'll compare two neurons. Let's suppose this is one neuron, central process and peripheral process. Suppose this is neuron A. Uh, this is neuron B, central process and peripheral process. The difference in these two neurons is, even though both are sensory neurons, both are taking information in this direction, one neuron has axon which is wide, and, and other has axon which is thin. So this is a neuron with thick diameter, and this is an axon which is thin diameter. This is suppose A and this is B. Do you think which one will take the information fast? The neuron with wide diameter or neurons with narrow diameter? For example, we stimulate both of them simultaneously. And if we have done appropriate stimulus, of, as you know, that action potentials will be produced. Action potentials will sweep on the surface of A and also on the surface of B. The velocity of action potential will be more in the neurons which are with wide Diameter or neurons with the narrow diameter? Who will tell me? Wide one. Wide one. It's very easy. I mean, it's just common sense. Is that right? That if if there is wide diameter, then the current which is moving, it will move with less resistance. But when the neurons diameter is less, then the current which has to move through that, that will be offered more internal resistance. And this concept is so easy that it should not be really exp explained that neurons which are having wide diameter, right, current velocity is higher. And neurons which are narrow diameter, their current velocity is slow. Now, there are some sensations which move slowly to the central nervous system and there are other sensations which move very rapidly to the central nervous system. So, nature wanted there should be neurons which conduct slowly and there must, must be neurons which conduct very fastly. Is that right? There are some information which move very fastly to your central nervous system. The other information we should move slowly. One way how neuron could enhance, how the nature could increase the velocity was just increasing the size of the neuron diameter. But look, if you really want a very, very fast conduction and you have only one option that you can increase the conduction velocity only by making it wide. Maybe this neuron become wider than my arm. Do you think it's a good strategy? It's not a good strategy. So nature has to design some other thing as well. 
what we discussed right now, the neurons which are having narrow diameter, they conduct slowly. And neurons which have wide diameter, they conduct fastly. So one way which nature could use to increase the velocity of conduction of the action potential was simply by increasing size of the neuron or diameter of the neuron. Is that right? But the thing is that some of the information moves to the central nervous system very, very rapidly. And if nature had only one way to increase the velocity, the only way to by increasing the diameter, maybe some neurons will become more wide than our arm. Of course, that is not a very good anatomical arrangement. So nature devised another way, a very, very clever and ingenious way to increase the velocity of conduction. Is that right? First, I will tell you, you have the concept of myelination. You have a concept of myelination or not? Actually, the second mechanism, the very ingenious mechanism, a very clever mechanism which nature uses to increase the velocity of current, velocity of action potential through the neuron is by myelinating the axons. We'll talk about what is myelination and how it increases velocity. What is myelination and how it increases velocity. First I will talk about a neuron which is not myelinated well. How the action potential passes through that. Let's suppose this is a neuron which is not myelinated and it is going to the central nervous system. It will be slow conductor, fast conductor. The neuron which is not myelinated is slow conductor. This is a slow conductor. How, first I will tell you how current passes through that. Then I will explain that once the myelination is done, what are the changes in the neuron and how velocity picks up, right? What really happens is that as we discussed last time that every cell has a resting membrane potential of how much? Yes, please. Approximately minus 70 millivolt. Excellent. Is that right? And when we little bit touch it here, for someone touches here, neuron will be, nerve ending will be distorted. And when it is distorted, what really happens? What comes out? Special type of sodium channels open. Just a minute, little Rubian. Like all cells, neurons have, what is this? Sodium potassium? ATPases. ATPases. And these sodium potassium ATPases are always bringing sodium out and concentrating, yes please, potassium in. So cells become rich in? Potassium. This we know already from previous lectures. Plus we know cells have special leaky channel for potassium. These are the potassium channels which are leaking all the time. These channels are not operated by the voltage. They are not operated by any ligand. They are opening open all the time. Because potassium is well concentrated in the cell, and membrane is leaky to potassium, so little bit of potassium keep on trickling out. And because potassium keep on coming out from every cell all the time, little bit potassium is coming out. So cell is losing positive charges outward. When cell is losing positive charges outward, inside of the membrane become relatively negative because it is losing the positive charges. And this diffusion of potassium outward creates electronegativity in the cell which is called resting membrane potential. Is that right? Now, listen. This neuron is having resting membrane potential comfortably and sleepy and someone little bit touch me here. If someone touch, what will happen? Nerve ending will be distorted. And uh, when it is distorted, these sodium, mechanically operated sodium channel, or we can say these sodium channels are normally closed, but when someone touch, right, neuron membrane is distorted and these sodium channels open. So what will happen? Sodium is more outside, inside, hurry up. Outside, so it will trickle Inside. in. So this sodium trickling, which is sodium which is coming in, this is due to stimulus. When you stimulate it, you alter the membrane permeability of the sodium and some sodium channel which are mechanically operated, they will allow some sodium to trickle in. And when the sodium will come in, positive charges are coming in, then what will happen? Re membrane was having how much electronegativity inside? Minus 70. When little sodium comes in, it will become more negative or less negative? Less negative. So when it will become less negative, it may become minus 60 or it may become minus 50. 
So it means membrane which was negatively polarized when you added the stimulus some cations come in positive charges came in and residual membrane potential be start becoming less negative. Let's suppose when resting membrane potential has fluctuated from minus 70 to minus 50 at this point when the voltage is minus 50 suddenly in an explosive fashion voltage sensitive sodium channels open what opens voltage sensitive sodium channels so what really happens that as soon as membrane become minus 50 these channels open and lot of sodium comes in and membrane which was minus 50 when lot of sodium comes in it become minus 40 minus 30 minus 20 minus 10 0 even maybe plus 10 so membrane which was negatively polarized previously membrane was negatively polarized stimulants brought some cations in and when stimulus brought some cations in resting membrane potential went to minus 50 and at minus 50 many voltage sensitive which voltage sensitive minus 50 voltage sensitive sodium channels opened at this potential at which sodium channels voltage gated sodium channels open this potential is called yes this potential is called threshold potential what is this potential threshold potential so by touching here we took the resting membrane potential up to threshold and at threshold potential suddenly lot of sodium channels open so sodium channels are these sodium channels are called voltage gated sodium channel ideally speaking they should be called threshold voltage sensitive sodium channel because they are sensitive to the which voltage threshold voltage is that right when they open lot of sodium come in an electron mem membrane which was negatively polarized by receiving lot of sodium uh, it become maybe less negative and when more and more sodium coming out in it become less and less negative until it loses its complete negative polarity membrane membrane is no more negative so membrane has lost its negative polarity when membrane has lost its negative polarity what we say negative polarization is lost so we say membrane is depolarized what we say membrane is depolarized but we said last time as soon as membrane is depolarized because lot of sodium has come and then depolarization sensitive potassium channels open another you know membrane has many type of channels these are potassium leaky channel don't confuse these channels with these channels these are what potassium voltage gated channels these were sodium leaky channel don't confuse them with voltage gated sodium channels so voltage gated sodium channel produced depolarization of the membrane they brought so much sodium that negative polarity is lost but when depolarization is going on depolarization sensitive voltage sensitive voltage guarded voltage operated potassium channels open normally these channels are closed but as soon as they find the membrane is getting depolarized they will open so as soon as depolarization is complete that enough sodium has come in and membrane is now let's suppose plus 20 suddenly voltage get it potassium channel open a lot of potassium goes out now they have closed voltage gated sodium channel after producing depolarization close and voltage gated potassium channel open because potassium is more into cell it will go out and potassium will go out as more and more potassium will be lost as more and more potassium will be lost membrane will again start becoming electronegative it was plus 10 then it becomes 0 then minus 10 then minus 20 minus 50 minus 70 so what is happening membrane is re-establishing its negative polarity by loss of potassium, potassium. we say membrane is repolarized what has happened membrane is repolarized so this was the patch of the membrane which was depolarized and just after the depolarization it went under the process of repolarization but you have to remember because nerve and muscles are excitable tissue <coughs> what is the definition of excitable tissue a tissue or cells on proper stimulation you can generate action potentials definition of excitable tissue is excitable tissue is any tissue or any cell 
when it is appropriately stimulated, waves of depolarization and repolarization run on the surface. The tissues which don't have this property, they are not called excitable tissue. Now you see, depolarization occur when voltage gets its sodium channel open and repolarization occur when voltage gets its potassium channel open. It means only those tissues can produce depolarization and repolarizations and only those neurons can, or those cells can produce depolarization and repolarization which are having voltage gated sodium channel then voltage gated potassium channel. Am I right? So every cell does not have voltage gated these channels. So every cell cannot have depolarization and repolarization. This is a characteristics of excitable tissue like nerve and muscle. Is that right? Now, look, someone touch me here. This information should go to the central nervous system and higher to my brain. Information will go as signals of depolarization followed by signals of repolarization. How the current moves? Actually, when lot of sodium will come in, this sodium which has come in, during the depolarizing event, this will spread on the sides. When this sodium will spread on the side, from the patch 1, it will go to the membrane patch number 2. Now this is the patch number 2, this is the patch number 3, patch number 4, patch number 5, hypothetically speaking. The sodium which has come inside the patch number 1, during the depolarization, this sodium will move into flanks. When it will go to the patch number 2, here the resting membrane potential was minus 70. As soon as this sodium came into this area, you say this depolarizing current came into this area, this resting membrane potential will move to threshold. Because it was minus 70, when little sodium will come to this area, it will become minus 60 or minus 50. As soon as this area become at threshold, then its sodium channels will open. A lot of sodium will come in and this area will become, Depolar yes, depolarized. As soon as it become depolarized, a little sodium will trickle to the next area. So next area will move from resting to threshold, threshold. and then its, its voltage gated sodium channels will open and it will be depolarized. Then from this area, a little sodium will move to the next area and take the next area's resting membrane potential up to threshold. And then what happens? Lot of sodium will come in and this will be depolarized. And of course, now you can tell what will happen next. The sodium which came in this area, it will move to the next area, next neighboring area and that area resting membrane potential will shift from resting to threshold and then sodium will come in. So what is really happening? Have you seen when you put a flame on the end of a firecracker and flames move on the strip, in the same way wave of depolarization moves. But actually someone touched me only here. But electrical activity is moving towards the brain, central nervous system, how? That you just produced a local stimulation and in this area you took the resting potential up to threshold by the help of stimulus. But once you have produced threshold in area number one, when area number one undergoes depolarization, it takes the second area to threshold and then area number two goes to depolarization and sodium which comes from area number two, it takes the area number three to threshold and then area number three undergoes depolarization and it triggers the next area to threshold and so on, wave of depolarization really sweeps on the membrane. But you already know, any area which undergo depolarization any area which is undergoing sodium influx or depolarization automatically potassium channels open and repolarization start. So what really happens when area number one undergoes depolarization, it triggers the area number two. Area number two start depolarization but area number one itself undergoes repolarization. When area number one triggers the area number two to open its voltage gated sodium channel, when this area is producing sodium influx at that very moment in previous area voltage sensitive depolarization sensitive potassium channel open and potassium start going out so it means when it is losing the potassium out it is again becoming more and more electro negative and it is again repolarizing its membrane right back to minus 70 so what really happens it's like this every patch causes the local current which 
produces depolarization in the next area and itself this area undergo repolarization. Now second area undergoes depolarization and trigger the depolarization in third area and itself it undergoes repolarization. Then third area undergoes depolarization and triggers the depolarization in fourth area and itself undergoes repolarization. So what is happening? In every area first sodium jump in and the point where sodium has jumped in to produce depolarization from the same point lot of potassium come out with a little delay to repolarize the membrane. But when any area is sodium in flux you see the next area will develop sodium in flux the next area so and so forth. So in this way we st someone stimulated only here but wave of depolarization followed by the wave of repolarization is sweeping towards the central nervous system. This is how these local currents are moving on the membrane. I think paper is also moving. Uh, these local currents are moving on the membrane to take the information to the central nervous system. Is that right? Now, during whole this process, some sodium will come in. You know, whenever depolarization occurs, sodium comes in and ideally speaking, ideally speaking, when sodium comes in, depolarization is produced. And ideally speaking, repolarization should be done by throwing the sodium out. No, no, no. I'm talking about ideally speaking, not really speaking. Ideally speaking, sodium come in and depolarize the membrane. And ideally speaking, we should kick the sodium out and membrane should go back to its electronegativity. That is what is ideal. Even in neurons world, ideal is not there. What happens? Sodium come in, depolarizes and it refuses to go out. Positive ions come in and they refuse to go out. Then in a very humble fashion, potassium moves out. For example, one, for example 10,000 sodium come in, then 10,000 potassium will go out. When sodium came in, membrane become electropositive and potassium goes out, membrane again become electro negative. Is that right? Now, what is the problem here? That when action potential wave move on this, action potential means depolarization followed by repolarization. For example, many action potential, someone is stretching me again and again if I'm lucky. So, don't laugh at me. I have my rights as well. Now listen, if someone is stretching me again and again, action potentials are again and again. So what is happening? Every time action potential moves, some sodium comes in and some potassium goes out. out. Do you think it's good in the long run? No. Because if all the sodium come in, all the potassium go out, then further sodium cannot come in. And information transfer system will fail. Right? And I said ideal is not there. The sodium comes in and refuses to go out. Someone come to your home as a guest and refuses to go out. And, <laughs> and place becomes so less that some of your own members have to go out. This is what depolarization and repolarization. Far less than ideal situation. Then what happened? You call the cops. <laughs> you take the guests and actively throw them out. And bring your friends who are very sad why you throw them out or your family members. Actively bring them back. So we have cops here also. Those cops are sodium potassium? 80 pages. Whatever sodium is coming in, during the depolarization they will throw it out. By the use of energy. They use the ATP. You know right now, the 25% of all energy in your body is only used by these cops. Sodium potassium ATP is sodium potassium pump. We use the ATP, they use the energy and this sodium which is very stubborn and refuse to go out, they kick it out with the use of energy and pull back the potassium with the use of energy. Is that right? Am I clear? Fine. Thank God sodium potassium ATP are there. Now, look. When action wave of depolarization is sweeping on this neuron, it means every part of the neuron will successively undergo depolarization and then undergo repolarization. Is that right? Now we imagine another situation. We have another neuron. This neuron has a very special arrangement which help it to conduct very fast. Let's suppose we take a cell. Well, this is a cell and you imagine, I think it's a very low velocity system. Right. Now listen, what is happening that 
if we do some trick, the trick is that, okay, I will first show you how the trick is done. You take a cell, just take a cell and press it out. As you press your uh, shirt, cell membranes become flat and nucleus will go on one side. So if we take a cell, let's suppose I take a cell and in this cell, I press it and it's nuclear and most of cytoplasm come on one side. And these two layers of the cell membrane are stripped together. Is that right? Then what I do? I put this cell here, right? Okay. This is the cell. I put the neuron here and rotate the cell around it. You know how I'm talking about, let's suppose, this is the cell. Okay. This is a cell. I press it and nucleus come on one side. Then what I do? Hold it, please. Here is a neuron, axon. What I do? I put axon here and rotate this cell like this. What I have made around the neuron? No, paper layers. <laughs> this is something you should know. This is paper. Right? I have just made, I have taken the, what is this, uh, marker and rotated a paper around it and this become a paper cover. Right? In the same way, nature is more clever. Nature takes special type of cells which are called Schwann cells. What are they cells? Schwann cells. And when, what really happens, Schwann cell come near the axon and then Schwann cells start rotating like the paper. Right? Now there is one Schwann cell doing like this, then another Schwann cell will also rotate, then another Schwann cell will also rotate, then what happens? Please, you have your Schwann cell back. Right. So what really happens, the Schwann cell rotate around it. When Schwann cell will rota rotate around it, what is happening? Multiple layers of cell membranes of Schwann cell. And this is Schwann cell which has made a cover on it. Is that right? Schwann cell has made and of course here is the nucleus of Schwann cell or here you can show the nucleus of Schwann cell. Is that right? Then another Schwann cell come and it is making rotations and revolutions around it and then now what happens? This is Schwann cell number one, this is Schwann cell number two. Now Schwann cell, when they revolve around it, actually there are multiple layers of the cell membranes. Cell membranes are made of what? Lipids. Cell membranes are made of lipids. It's just like rotating lot of lipid around that area of the axon. Lipids are good conductor of current or bad conductor? Good. They are very bad conductor of current. You know, if this area of the axon from this point up to this point has been rotated with all this cell, do you think from here sodium can go in? Can potassium come out? No. So do you think you can generate action potentials through this area where Schwann cell has made its personal rotations? So this area becomes insulated from the current activity. The area, what is Schwann cell? You take an axon and around that you rotate a cell many times. And cell is rotated so tightly that multiple revolutions just make multiple layer of the cell membranes around that. Is that right? Now these cell membranes, right, they are very rich in lipid. Which lipid especially? Uh, sphingomyelin is especially too much in this. Right? Sphingomyelin. Anyway, these lipids are in, acting as electrical insulator. They are acting as electrical insulator. So what really happens that from here current cannot go and depolarization cannot occur and depolarization cannot occur. Am I clear? Now, okay, I should make at least three Schwann cells to illustrate my point. This is the axon inside the Schwann cells. And of course, there's one more Schwann cell which is present over here. Is that right? Now listen. Now Schwann cells have made multiple areas of insulations. Now, let's suppose someone touch me here. Now listen care. We have to repeat that story here and see what is the change after myelination. Someone touch me here. Of course, that very welcome touch will take the resting magnetic potential up to 
threshold and the industry minimum potential will move out to minus 50 and at threshold potential a lot of which channels open sodium. voltage gated sodium channels this area undergoes depolarization and of course then what happens same area undergoes repolarization this depolarizing current this depolarization current which will come here can it produce depolarization in this area no, no. Act, but this area from this point up to this point is usually 1 to 2 millimeter area not more than that nature has only put from this area to that area is only 1 to 2 millimeter a very small area actually whatever sodium has come from this area from area number 1 the sodium goes in and this travels usually 1 to 3 millimeters so it reaches up to here here there are a lot of voltage gated sodium channels concentrated so a lot of sodium will come in and this sodium then again within the axon will move and the next gap between the insulations again there is very high concentration of sodium channels and a lot of sodium so what really happens these gaps which are between the successive Schwann cells revolutions these gaps are called nodes of Ranvier okay this is something you people know I'm really surprised Ranvier yeah they give surprises node of Ranvier so what are nodes of Ranvier that in heavily myelinated axons in between the Schwann cells myelinations there are little gap and those gaps are called nodes of Ranvier and these points here the membrane of the axon is exposed to extracellular fluid and it is very very rich in sodium channels as well as of course voltage gated sodium channels and as well as there are a lot of voltage gated potassium channels here so what really happens and these gaps should not be too long this should be only length should be so much that this should sodium should flow in so what really happens when you stimulate point number one depolarizing current of sodium moves within the axon and next node of Ranvier it takes the resting minimum potential up to threshold and this area depolarizes then this the uh, sodium which comes from first node of Ranvier this sodium moves within the axon and what happened all this area from resting minimum potential is moving towards threshold but no sodium can come from here as soon as this stimulus sodium moves up to which uh, node of Ranvier 2 then resting minimum potential in this area will shift to the threshold as soon as it shifts millions of the sodium channels open and depolarization occur in this area so what really happens that current is not moving throughout the membrane it is moving from one node of Ranvier to the next to the next is that right so what will be the effect that you stimulate one area right sodium currents come in passes within the axon right up to the next node of Ranvier depolarize that then this depolarization which is on this node of Ranvier the, this sodium in flux will lead to enough sodium diffusion up to the next node of Ranvier right and then resting minimum potential of next node of Ranvier move from resting to threshold and deposition is culminated here and then next point of deposition will be here you get it so what is happening of course this is very easy to understand and this area is depolarized it depolarizes the next node of Ranvier and itself it undergoes repolarization when this node of Ranvier undergoes depolarization it triggers the depolarization in next node of Ranvier and itself it undergoes repolarization so what is happening the wave of depolarization followed by wave of repolarization which is called action potential is jumping from one node of Ranvier to the next node of Ranvier to next node of Ranvier so velocity of current will be slow or fast? fast it will be fast is that right so what is this this is second clever mechanism used by the nature to increase the velocity of electrochemical information transfer within the axon system that axons area go under myelination with nodes of Ranvier right myelinated area is very high resistant insulated area node of Ranvier are excitable areas so what really happens that depolarization or action potential jump from one node of Ranvier to the next node of Ranvier so 
it is just like this just focus on my foot in this area first I will tell you how the action potential moves in upper axon it is not myelinated it moves like this you know every part of the membrane should undergo depolarization and repolarization but about this fashion it is like jumping like this you can understand it is going to be fast is that right yeah. this type of current movement and action potential is called saltatory conduction what is it called saltatory what is the meaning of saltatory my English is not good what is the meaning by saltatory what I feel something like jumping right saltatory conduction so nature can increase the velocity of action potentials through the axons by two mechanisms. Number one, by increasing the diameter of the axons, making the fibers large size, and number two, by putting the myelinations. Right? Velocity will become very fast. But if neuron is very thin and not myelinated, velocity may be very low, as low as 0.25 meter per second. And in very large fiber with heavily myelination, velocity may be 100 meter per second. You see, 400 times it is increased. Are there any some, sens some sensations which go slowly? And there are some sensations which go fastly. Can you tell me which sensations go slowly? Okay, first tell me which, you know, which one. Slowly is like yeah, very good. Dull pain moves slowly and fast pain moves fastly. No. No, but this is true. <laughs> she is right. She is saying slow pain moves slowly and fast pain <laughs> moves fastly. She is right. Actually, we have two types of pain. Actually, people have many types of pain in their mind. But as far as skin is concerned or tissue is concerned, there are two types of pain. When you get a cut with knife, you feel a sharp pain. That is also called fast pain. When you feel a cut with knife, there's a sharp pain. After that, a dull pain continues. The sharp pain moves with fast fibers. They're called A delta fibers. And slow pain, the dull pain, moves with C fiber, which are not myelinated well. So you are very right. The pain has two components, fast component and slow component. Sharp pain is fast component, and dull pain is slow component. Fast pain will go through heavily myelinated fibers and of course you are so wise to understand that slow pain should go through unmyelinated C fibers. That's easy to understand, isn't it? The other sensation also. The fine touch, fine touch moves slowly or fastly. If there's a pin prick, it is fast. You immediately realize someone has pricked a pin. Okay, I will just tell you there's some sensations which are very urgent to go to your brain. Right? like pin prick that can that should go or some sharp cut information should go immediately there's something dangerous or very fine touch it goes very fastly is that right for example when you are doing typing information of touch go fast or slow it should go fast that is fine touch is that right uh, right but there are some sensations we should go slowly can you tell me a few sensations which nature enjoys to take them slowly even neurons enjoy them step by step. No, no saltatory activity. You are young people. You must know which sensation should go slowly. I think Mustafa must be knowing it. Somehow by his face and expression. No, no Sexual sensations. Right? Then what else? Tickling. Someone has ever tickled you? When they touch you, when they touch, information goes far. When tickling, you keep on, you know, it goes slowly. You are also happy by this. Right. <laughs> so which information goes slowly? Tickling sensation. Itching, thank God, itching also goes slowly, but eventually it goes. Right? Itching, sense of itch, sense, sense of tickling. Yeah? Sense of uh, sexual sensations. They move slowly to the central nervous system. Nature is not in hurry to take them. Right? And he's talking about temperature. That also moves slowly. Let me tell you something funny. You know, women have some experience that when they are cooking something, if a drop of oil, hot, very hot drop of oil touch, first they feel touch and little after that they feel pain of temperature. Is that true or not? Next time try it yourself. Right? So, no, no, no. No, there is a little difference. You feel the touch of oil and then you feel it's very hot. Right? 
Okay, I will give you another example. If inadvertently, in, by chance, wrongly, inadvertently, you open the shower which is very hot water. First you feel water come and then you jump around. <laughs> it is very... First you are happy, water is there. But before your happiness, really you celebrate. Water is very hot and you jump. I don't know in which direction, but you have to go out of that area. Right? So, temperature goes slowly. The touch of the water is fast. Temperature of the water is perceived with little delay. Is that right? So, whole purpose of this lecture up to now was that conduction through the neuron depends on the diameter of the neuron and depends on the myelination, myelination of the neurons. Right? And of course, another advantage of myelination you know, nature is very clever. Not only by myelinating system, nature has achieved fast conduction, which has made economy also. What is the economy? In this neuron, which is slow conductor, more areas undergo depolarization and repolarization, more sodium is coming in and more potassium is going out. So these nasty cops have to work more. There is more and more sodium coming in, and more potassium going out. So depolarization is going throughout the membrane and repolarization is followed throughout the membrane. So more sodium is lost and more potassium is gained. So sodium potassium ATPases have to work more. But in this case, do you think all membrane is getting sodium? No. So very little areas in the membrane get sodium. So very few sodium ions come in and very few potassium goes out. So sodium potassium ATPases have to work here more or less? Less. less. So not only these well myelinated axons are very fast but they also have economy that they are more efficient right that while their work is getting more and out of velocity is higher but their what is that sodium potassium ATP work is less. less is that right am I clear and another advantage here before the sodium and potassium balance is much changed you can pass less impulses, but here you can pass millions of the impulse action potential before really there is significant change in sodium concentration inside and potassium concentration outside. Are you understanding? Because there are less ionic changes in this. So this was something about the conduction of, okay, uh, I will make one diagram here. I will make a section. For example, this is your beautiful axon, right? And what is around it? How the myelination occur? What is this? This is your Schwann cell. Is that right? Then of course this will move forward and make multiple revolution. And then of course it become tight and compressed. Right? Because you get it? So first one is myelinated or not? Okay, you tell me which one is, this is number one, okay, make it this number two, this number three, I'll give you one more example. It looks confused. Right, it doesn't have any Schwann cell around it. This is first, second, it is third. Which one is myelinated? Second and third are myelinated. And which one is not myelinated? You are wrong. Third is well myelinated. Second is not myelinated. And first is diseased. Remember the point which I want to make to you. Schwann cells are also present with unmyelinated axons. Only they don't make rotations. You get me? This is unmyelinated because there is no multiple rotations and this is the point through through which depolarization occur and repolarization occur so unmyelinated neurons are still in association with schwann cells but schwann cells don't make multiple what rotations so they don't deposit much myelin myelin does not mean there's a schwann cell myelin mean there are multiple layers of the membranes of schwann cell there are no multiple layers of membranes of schwann cells so this is unmyelinated this has multiple layers, you look at its face, multiple layers. So it is myelinated. Is that right? This is very sad. Maybe due to some disease attack, its Schwann cell has disintegrated. This is a demyelinated neuron. Right? Can you name any disease which can demyelinate the peripheral nerves? 
Oh my God, Parkinson's disease is in central nervous system. You are as far from the answer as much you could be with all your effort. Yes. Multiple sclerosis is a demyelinating disease, but answer is wrong because that is a demyelinating disease in central nervous system. I'm talking about demyelination of peripheral nervous system. Schwann cells are the cells which provide insulation to the peripheral new exons. There are many diseases, but at least tell me one of the very classic presented disease, Guillain-Barre syndrome. Spellings are very difficult. I write it like this. Right? Guillain-Barre? syndrome is that right you really want to know spellings no. that's good but if you <laughs> I appreciate that otherwise I can write it Gyan Bare syndrome Gyan Bare syndrome is that right now you're comfortable but truly if you really write it spellings with a little bit with very little errors I can do it What is this? Don't call it Guillain Barre syndrome. Double L is silent. So they call it Guillain Barre syndrome. Guillain Barre syndrome is a very dangerous demyelinating disease of the peripheral nervous system. That when autoimmune process attacks your Schwann cells and destroy the Schwann cells and myelin sheets are destroyed and many neurons get demyelinated. So person cannot get sensation to his central nervous system. This is bad and more bad is that action potential cannot come from central nervous system to the muscles very bad why it is so bad first of all person become paralyzed you have heard of Gyabare syndrome that produces paralysis ascending paralysis the worst part of that syndrome is when it produces demyelination of the nerves which are supplying the worst part of respiratory muscles many people die where respiratory system is not functional the people who used to have in past very severe Gyambare syndrome, they used to die because respiratory system will, when resp neurons coming to the respiratory system, they will be demyelinated, uh, inspiration, expiration will stop and person will die. These days we are lucky. What we do? A young man of 22 years old, father of just three kids, right, comes to you with ascending paralysis. And he cannot move his legs and arms. And every day his paralysis is becoming more severe. And then he starts difficulties in breathing. What you do with him? Put him on respirator. You put him on respirator. And artificial respiration will continue for a few days until he starts fighting with the machine. Why he will fight with the machine? Because remyelination has started. And when remyelination occurs, his nervous system tries to control the respiration. He fights the machine. We throw away the machine. And he is back to his action. They don't die these days. You simply put him on the respirator for many days. They remain like this. And you keep on giving some positive hope for, hope for his wife and his children. Their papa will be back. And Julia comes back. Is that right? There were days when we didn't have respirator. We never knew what's happening. And uh, in Gyabare syndrome, we we'll lose the people. <coughs> now you said something about multiple sclerosis. Multiple sclerosis is another demyelinating disease, but that demyelinate the central axons, axons present within the central nervous system. You know why? There are Gambare syndrome does not attack the central axons, and multiple sclerosis attack the central demyelinating system, but does not attack the peripheral. Why? Simply because the cells which myelinate the peripheral nerves are different, and cells which myelinate the central axons are different right let me tell you this is a difference between the myelination of peripheral nervous system and central nervous system let me you have a brain suppose yeah <laughs> right and this is a here someone touch on your foot and information is going to your central nervous system this is axon and now from here information is going up is that right this is peripheral axon this is central axon this is myelinated by Schwann cells, Schwann cells. okay uh, I just yeah these are by Schwann cells in the central nervous system now there are many suppose there are many axons coming here right so all of them are having their very committed 
Schwann cell. These Schwann cells are really very, very committed. The Schwann cell which is providing myelination to one axon will never do provide myelination for the any other neighboring axon. Again, one axon may be myelinated by multiple Schwann cells. And Schwann cells which are committed with one axon, they will never interact with another axon. I mean, true commitment, right? But look at here what is happening. Here, the multiple axons in central nervous system. I will draw them here. These are central nervous system axons. I don't know. I love to teach. Yes, I'm enjoying it, you see. Every, especially making straight lines. But look at this. This is another cell in the central nervous system which is going to do myelination. Even some cells are promiscuous. It is one of those. In the central nervous system, they feel they are very safe. What they do? They bring one extension to the cell and then provide myelination around the cell. Right? Meanwhile, they may provide one extension going to, but it reminds you what? Does it remind you something? You don't want to remember, I think. <laughs> And it has one extension going there. You know, this one naughty cell. Giving extension simultaneously providing service to different axons. Don't think this is economy. This is dangerous. It is really dangerous. You know why? Because if this cell dies, recovery process may be more complex and disturbed. As it happened, you know, someone died and children were not knowing from where they came. Anyway. So what I'm talking about, in central nervous system, cells which provide myelination are different than the cells which provide myelination to peripheral nervous system. The cells which provide myelination in central nervous system are called Schwann cells. And what are the cells which provide myelination in central nervous system? Oligodendrocytes. Because these are entirely different cells. So they have different proteins, they have different antigens. So when immune system immune headquarter, autoimmune disease, attack the peripheral Schwann cells, it will not cross-react with central oligodendrocytes. So you will get purely peripheral demyelinating disease. And if immune system is triggered against the antigens of, what is this? Oligodendrocyte, it will not cross-react with Schwann cells. So person will develop central demyelinating diseases. The classical peripheral demyelinating disease is Guillain-Barre syndrome. And classical central demyelinating disease is multiple sclerosis, which you mentioned. Multiple sclerosis. For a while, we just uh, stop our lecture here. Again, I will make another diagram. Let's suppose here the Schwann cell. Sometimes Schwann cells also do the things. Let me tell you. One Schwann cell may have providing simultaneously service to multiple axons, but not making rotations. It is myelination or non-myelination? Non-myelination. Non Even unmyelinated axons are embedded in the grooves of Schwann cells. But when we talk about properly fully myelinated axon, then they are multiple rotations. Is that right? So when there is true myelination, Schwann cell is committed to one axon. Schwann cell is committed to one axon. But when they are unmyelinated fibers, then one Schwann cell may be having multiple axons in its neighboring pockets, but not properly revolving around any one. It's a poor service. So none of them gets properly myelinated. Am I clear? Is that right? Any question up to this? Okay, let's have a break.